Hey everyone, and welcome to a uh, live Ziz AMA. I have Ziggy with me, who's helping me out as my guest host. It's a uh, special AMA, I say subscriber milestone for hitting 400 subscribers on Twitch. So uh, we're turning the tables now, and Ziggy's helping me with that. Which uh, Thank you so much for joining me as the guest host, Ziggy. My pleasure, man. Time to flip the tables, eh? Last time you, uh, you did the AMA for me, interviewed me, asked me all the awkward questions, and today I'm going to be doing the same thing and picking out the most awkward of them that I oh. possibly can. Oh, great. I'm excited. I'm really, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to focus on Leah, just answering questions. Cool, man. Should, would you like to jump straight into it? Yeah, go for it. I think this is a pretty popular question for you. You probably get it a bit. It's from g 123 A on Reddit. How much sleep do you realistically get on a daily basis? Is Do you ever fear the possible negative consequences from getting too little sleep? So, at the, it's very different. Like, obviously, Path of Exile is very seasonal. So, at the start of leagues, yeah, I will get pretty little sleep. I'll be getting uh, sometimes two to four hours sleep. And, uh, yeah, that can be pretty hard at the start of leagues. But then, especially now, with my, my girlfriend's just moved to Korea for five months, or five months left now. And then uh, what I've started doing is I'll do a 12 to 20 hour session of streaming. So uh, somewhere between 20. there. It depends how tired I am and stuff like that. And I always stop if I do feel too tired or I don't feel good. Uh, but then what I do now is I try to sleep nine hours. So not having any, like, I don't have any super real life constraints anymore. I like my girlfriend being around. What I can do with that <laughs> is I can, Yeah, well, I mean, what I can do with that is I can rotate my sleeping pattern. It doesn't matter too much to me if I wake up in the middle of the night or if I wake up um, at a normal time. So I'm actually getting quite a lot of sleep. But uh, yeah, I'd say minimum lately I'm getting four to eight hours. So it sounds like you've thrown off the shackles of the regular 24-hour daily cycle. Because if you're doing 12 to 20 hours and sleeping nine hours, then you're just kind of like bleeding in the next day. Yeah. It's like days start stop making any sense at that point, um, I'm guessing. Yeah. I'm sort of starting to be like, it's Saturday? Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm like that quite often myself, so I imagine it's far worse for you. I have a follow-up question for you. Okay. So when I do like, uh, when I get to about six hours on the stream, I notice um, I notice my my sentences stop making sense. Oh yeah. Do you uh do you run into that and yeah. how do you deal with that? Uh, actually, Bertini helps me out a lot with that because he'll say things like, oh. Red Bull brain, or you're mumbling, and I'll like, I'll really, it actually makes me slightly self conscious, but in a good way. So I'll start enunciating a lot more and like focusing on it. And a lot of people joke that they can see how long I've been awake with how, how, like, how big my mouth is, or how open my mouth is. It's like, oh wow, he's like practically drooling at this point. Now he's even, oh, okay, up times 30 hours. Fuck. Oh yeah, definitely can yeah, relate to that. It's pretty tough to talk for that uh, that long straight as well. So, do you kind of like how do you, do you um, get a little bit more chill like as the stream goes on and just kind of like let the music do its thing, let the gameplay do its thing, and talk less? Yeah, I feel like in the first eight hours of a stream, I'll basically be talking constantly, and I love not shutting up. Don't get me wrong, but then <laughs> especially twenty hours plus, if I'm doing red maps and stuff, I'll be like super focused and like I don't want to die. But yeah, definitely notice that. I talk a lot less after like 15 to 30 hours. It's pretty, yeah, 30 hours on merge, it's like, I'm dead. How do you, uh, I'd like to open up the floor now for you to uh, make a formal apology to your girlfriend for calling her a constraint. <laughs> yeah, okay. I just meant, I didn't know how else to phrase it. She's, she's definitely worth it. I don't know how she puts up with me. But, uh, I apologize, Bucket. I uh, I have a mini situation like what you're doing now where Amy's gone away for seven days, oh. so you just kind of like you know you just stream whenever you want and stuff. You don't I I know I know what you mean is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, I feel you. So wait, what you're trying to say is we can expect like six back to back twenty four hour streams? Oh, abs absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, next question uh, is a little more of a uh, early Ziz question from Harry Hayes on Reddit. What's your favorite childhood game? What what did you grow up on? One Cut your teeth fall. on it. What is one must fall? It is a, uh, it's sort of similar to how like Tekken would be and stuff like that, where it would be uh, like a fighter game, but with robots. And it was like that, that and Diablo 1 was the main games I played. Like one must fall was basically my childhood, but it absolutely loads. 
what uh what did you like about it uh i got to kick the shit i got to be a robot i got to kick the shit out of all the robots it was just a great fighting game and then diablo 1 was just like the pinnacle of like rng and loot and like oh you've got a ring of the zodiac oh my god that's amazing stuff like that like i've always liked rng games so did you have a bit of a kind of like a friends and stuff that played Diablo 1 as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of my friends played Diablo 1 and then when Diablo 2 came out, we would all play that. We mostly, uh, a lot of us played offline, like on the local area network mode. So some of my friends started modding and stuff like that and playing on like 64 player modes. So you would kill like three mobs and get like 30 levels. And I was like, really? How much did that lead into you playing Path of Exile today? Uh, yeah, definitely a lot. Like, I'd always played, um, I played Diablo 2, I played Diablo 3 for like a thousand hours. And then after Diablo 3 started like taking a direction I didn't really like, and uh, a friend of mine, Quicksilver, was like, yeah, you should play Path of Exile, you should try it. And I was like, you hate games like that. So if he likes it, I must like it. Tried it, and uh, I loved it. And one of the first things that happened in the game was an exalt dropped and uh, nobody believed me i didn't know what it's <laughs> worth they were like i said something like hey i got an exalted orb and they're like haha funny and i was playing on hardcore went all the way up to mervale killed mervale myself without dying and then they were like okay well link us everything you got and we'll tell you what's good and i linked them in an exalted room they're like oh my fucking god he wasn't joking <laughs> <laughs> nice that's that's a good like new player story i like that one <laughs> do you think you'll um you do you think you'll be looking for like are you on the lookout for other games to play ever because you spend so much time on peewee well i mean i would rather con like i'd rather peewee continue growing change get a better graphics engine eventually and keep up with the day because i i love uh, i feel like the developers are pretty in touch with their game which is really hard as a developer you'll notice like more and more games are sort of like do they do they play their own game uh whereas i feel like it's it's a pretty good direction most of the time like they, yeah there are a few things i don't like but there always will be um i was pretty excited about no man's sky i love sandbox games so that's <laughs> something i was really excited about uh it's a it's a shame that let's just pretend it never came out but yeah <laughs> Yeah. Did you actually go play that? Because I oh, was yeah. going to play that and just never did. <laughs> it was great for two hours. Oh, two hours is pretty good. Pretty good. How much does how much does that game cost again? Sixty bucks? <laughs> yeah, I tried to get a refund. I was over to the two hours. Oh. <laughs> Damn. But no, it Do was it was fun. Yeah, it's just not enough content. Mm. Bit a bit shallow it seemed. Twenty twenty dollar survival like, early access game if, is what it looked like, like to me. Yeah. Exactly. If a Diablo four came out, yeah, I would definitely try that. But it would have to be it would have to be uh, a game I would be like super passionate about. Like it's very hard to find a game like Path of Exile. Like yeah. in the last year I've put probably around four thousand hours into Path of Exile, like three point five to four thousand hours. Very hard to find a game you can actually do that and still love it. Do you think you would uh try like what do you think would happen that would get you back to like try Diablo three? Uh, can't see that happening. It's no, it's so not. far gone. They would have to yeah. put trading back in the game, and no, and I I hate set items. I love that Path of Exile doesn't have them. Well, mm. so, uh, it's too too different. Like I do quite like Grim Dawn as well, but again, there's not enough end game content. Yeah, do you see yourself trying out anything like Lost Ark or Lineage when they come out? Uh, I haven't heard much about Lineage. I've heard some of Lost Art. Uh, I, I don't know. It wasn't something... I saw one video and I wasn't like, oh, this looks amazing compared to Path of Exile. So, I don't know. I'll probably try it a little bit. But it's definitely not something I'm super hyped about. Yeah, okay. Sounds like you're pretty pretty keen on uh, pretty keen on the POE action then. Seems to be hitting... Well, I mean, with the 20-hour days that you're doing, it seems to be hitting everything that you're looking for in the game right now. I think the scariest thing is, like, I'll, I'll play it offline as well. Like, I'll be talking to my friends, and they're like, so what are you doing now after streaming? I'm like, I'm on Grinding Dry Lake. And they're like, are you in now? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I do that sometimes too. That's <laughs> you great. Like... It's really relaxing. Wouldn't you have enough of it? Mm. Wouldn't you... Haven't you had enough by now? But... No. Nope. <laughs> Apparently not, eh? Nope. It's the only, so, like, yeah. It's, this, EVE Online, and Darkfall are, like, the three games that I've been able to, like, really turn time into. Yeah, okay. All right, so now I'm going to ask a little bit, slightly more of a controversial topic question from uh, Lurkox on Reddit. 
Uh, I've seen you and other streamers actively avoid handouts. Do you think that streamer handouts deserve the outrage it gets from the community? With the focus on the race to 100, at what point, if ever, does a streamer handouts become a problem? Now, I'm personally very against handouts because, especially like currency handouts, and I, uh, I've tried, I've explained this a few times as well on my stream, where, um, and I, I actually do still avoid this, but for example, uh, they say me and uh, Nilky, they, we've been tight since we were eight, we've been playing games together, and he goes like, Ziz, I'm going to quit the league, do all my stuff. I wouldn't have a problem with someone accepting that. But for example, mm. say that Bokist has been watching my stream for six months and go like, hey, I really like you as a streamer, I'm quitting the league, do all my stuff. I see a very big distinction between those two, because then it's actively a streamer thing, is like directly to you being a streamer. Where I say, yeah. And the other thing is, you, you already get so many advantages by being a streamer that you, it's kind of silly or too much out of the way to um, avoid. Like, yeah, like PT avoids it very well by being a uh, self found character. But, um, for example, say I'm doing a Ziri, a lot of people will be like, oh, he's doing a Ziri, maybe he'll want to buy my Ziri set. So a lot of the times, I won't have to go to Trade Chat to try to buy. Um, at Ziri sets, and even when I do, and I, I do use trade chat still to get at Ziri sets, but I'm sure someone goes, oh, he's looking to buy at Ziri sets, I'll sell him mine. So you, you do get so many privileges already by being a streamer that taking currency handouts or like gifts is too much out of the way, at least for me. The other thing as well is that um, I play, like, a lot of streamers would only play like, uh, let's take Etup as an example, he usually doesn't play the full three months of a league. He would only play like two weeks, four weeks, stuff like that. Whereas I play from the first day till the very last. And I think if I got a lot of free stuff, especially towards the end, it would start killing the game for me. Whereas if I've earned everything myself, it makes it like more fun. Like, I have earned all of this. So is it more of just a personal thing for you that it's more fun? Or do you see like a, a competitive like slash ethics concern there? Yeah, it, it's both. Definitely, I would like... Say I was like racing against like Rise or Havoc, and I saw mm -hmm. them like, oh, he just got a six thing shabs for free, or he got two hundred chaos for free. Yeah, I would be like, that that's kind of shitty. And I feel like most people in the competitive scene don't do that either. They'll mostly uh, get help from their team, which is obviously it's their race team. So usually, uh, I'm not seeing anyone in like an actual race take free handouts. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's. Uh... When it comes to the competitive side of things, it's definitely something that you would frown on. Oh, yeah. However, when someone's not really actively competing, how do you feel about them getting freebies from their viewers? I think it's more of a personal choice. Like, as long as you're not competing, it's whatever. It doesn't really affect me. Do you feel that there's... Uh, so, would you still kind of avoid that in that situation? So, you're a pretty competitive player now, but if you weren't a competitive player... I would, but that's more of a personal choice because I want to continue. I want to. I. It's very, really, very really important for me to earn everything myself. Like for example, when I was younger, I remember I would cheat in games like Warcraft One, Warcraft Two, and it would really like kill the game for me. Even like Sims, yeah. when you use like the infinite money to you buy everything, and then you're like, ah, well, okay, right, let's find another game. Whereas if you do, or like it's it's the journey for me in a lot of things, like gaining all the currency and stuff like that. That's part of the main fun for me. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I kind of feel feel the same way myself. But it feels like what it would be like, you know, typing Rosebud into The Sims and yep. getting all your money that way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's That was the example I come up with for some reason. Uh, uh, the next question comes in from Arnimon. Uh In your opinion, what is the most powerful mechanic in the game? Vinktar? Of e Vinktar? Or, or Valpact. Vinktar, Valpact. Uh, yeah. It's hard to, like, pinpoint one don't really know what's more broken. It's more a combination out of, out of, of mechanics. And Volpa yeah, okay. Yeah. What What do you think leads to... Uh, what do you think is the issue with Vinkter, if you do think it is an issue? It's more the fact that you can you can out-tank everything. It's... I think that... Okay. The biggest thing is the whole Pathfinder, Vinktar, Valpak combo. Like, mm -hmm. on their own, they're not like, yeah, a character with Valpite, not particularly broken. A character with Vinktar, not particularly broken. But Pathfinder, with all of it, I mean, it's crazy. So it sounds like the actual mechanic, then, is more Leech that you're talking about. Yeah, I guess Leech is... I guess Valpite is sort of the root of the issue. 
Yeah, so like instantaneous leech yeah, again. instantaneous leech. So, and that allows you to trivialize certain pieces of content that you don't think you should be able to, correct? Yeah, because especially with CI, you can get enough energy shield that you don't get one shot. You can get up to like, say say 15k would be pretty reasonable to not get one shot except by, you know, tanking a Valsam or a few other things. And then as the, you don't need regen because you're just going to be out leeching everything. You're always going to be full. So as long as you don't get one shot, you're basically invulnerable except with like a few fuck ups. Do you see like a parallel between, because you played early Diablo 3, right? So mm. do you pl see a kind of a parallel between the leech issue that, that game had as well? See, I wasn't too into the meta. I was just playing like a sorcerer. don't even think I had okay. a leech. Uh, uh, I remember. Sure. Yeah, okay. I remember the early Diablo 3 days with the life bar was just doing this constantly. <laughs> oh, right. Because you'd like take damage and leech up instantly. It was, uh, it seems a lot very similar to what I see uh -huh. with uh, CI leech builds now. Yeah, I, it just it puts so many other builds at a big disadvantage. Do you have an idea of how you would like to see Leech or Valpact changed then? Uh, some sort of diminishing return, I think. Whereas you can only Leech or like within like a 10 second window and it starts getting worse and worse and that has like a cooldown that needs to get reset. Like, uh, I, I know especially the Shaper fight has been brought up a lot. And people just mm. standing in the beam. Obviously, uh, a band-aid to fix the Shaper fight could be that the uh, the beam did, like, ridiculous damage. Except, like, it was more and more, like, say, when, like, 100% and then 200%, 400%. The more you stand it, so, like, cumulative damage. Mm. So, yeah, I, I think, like, diminishing returns as well is something that could fix Leech. So, for the amount of Leech you'd stack, you're thinking... Yeah, well, more like, say you're standing there and tanking a boss, it would be like, yeah. it would be instant, and then it would like start tapering off the amount you could leech within like okay. a window. You could only leech X amount. Like the boss only had a limited amount of blood for you to leech off them or something? I don't have a like, lore, lore <laughs> explanation for it. I just, I mean, I'm not a developer, so it's pretty hard for me to yeah. come up with a good solution for it, but. Uh... Yeah, no, I, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it seems like you could, like you said, fix the beam, but then you have to fix this other boss skill and then this other boss skill yeah, and this exactly. other boss skill. Yeah, exactly. It's just a band-aid for the Shaper. Yeah, so instead, just tackling the actual leech as yeah. a root mechanic might be a better solution. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I feel like it's uh, some limit. Or, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. The next question is uh, a particularly controversial one. Oh. Is comes in from Hex on Reddit. And it is fuck Mary Kill. <laughs> oh. And you can it's uh Math or Project PT and Ziggy D. Uh, you can pretend I'm not here for this, so my feelings won't be hurt. You can put me in there wherever you like. It won't be awkward at all, I promise. It's gonna be really awkward. I'm gonna marry Ziggy. <laughs> I think you've done cooking streams and stuff, and I've seen you bake, I think. I think you'd make you great <laughs> great with mine. Oh. House Ziggy. <laughs> um <laughs> Okay, and like it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's sort of easy. I, I would kill PT, <laughs> but with bleach. I think that would be very symbolic. I think he would like yeah. that. I think he would appreciate that. And then I, I would fuck Mathil. Yeah, I mean, I probably would have given that the same answer. Marry myself. <laughs> <laughs> bleach PT and fuck Mathil. I mean, that's seems to like seems like a really easy question. I don't even know why they bothered to ask. Really, <laughs> good, good answer. Yeah, good answer. I felt, felt like it was easy. <laughs> yeah. uh, Toss player 99 from Reddit asks Shaper was a tough and exhausting but very unique and fun encounter. Do you like it as well and do you wish to get more encounters that are way longer lasting with certain phases and scripted events you'd have to react to or do you feel POE as an action RPG is more about short fights with bosses you could at some point kill within a couple of hits? Um, I love the Shaper fight. There's a few things I would tune on it and I feel the second stage might be a little unneeded. I think having it to two stage five would be better better because I made a shaper guide yesterday and I feel like I was like, yeah, the first stage is basically the same as the second, but the third stage is completely different. So I feel like they could have cut out the second stage. Mm. Um, one of the coolest things for me was uh, when you're in like the Zana bubble and he instantly beams you after. She's like, come here, be safe. And then he's like, Hadouken. And that was so <laughs> cool. We were like, beam, 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 get out. It was super cool. So uh, definitely one of my top favorite gaming moments. Very well designed fight. Um, 
the main thing I would change is I feel like the uh, the sauna safe stage should be safe. It shouldn't be any bulls spawning during that, in my opinion. Because they can still spawn, and then if you have one uh -huh. inside, that can, especially on hardcore, it can break your entire run, so you'd have to get a new shaper set. You can get lucky and get it close to the edge, but after a while, you're going to have, like, a very small circle, and you big chance of fucking up. Yeah, so uh, having the bubble extra protect from the degens fields as well. Yeah, I think, I, I think that would fix. be good. Other than that, I think it's an amazing fight. I mean, there's been some problems with the uh, the black projectile balls that he like throws around. I think they they need to sort of disappear when the shield goes down. I think, or at least they need to be fixed that they are actually where they say they are because they desync a bit. You've seen like mm -hmm. Farblar got killed by one that wasn't near him and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, it looks like there's some technical issues with hitboxes on a few of the yeah. things. Even the laser, I've seen hit people when they weren't in it and that sort of thing. Yeah, but definitely a super cool fight. It was, I think it's easier than Uber at Siri when you get it down. Obviously, it's still a new fight for a lot of people and we haven't practiced it much. But uh, it's super fun. It's so much more fun than Uber at Siri as well. How many players do you think will be able to get into and take on shape? Like, how, how doable do you think that is for like, the average player? I mean, there's quite a lot of people farming it already. It's uh, a lot of the difficulties getting there and getting a set. Mm -hmm. um, on hard, I was very like very surprised they made it part of the uh, challenges needed to get forty forty. And it'll be really interesting seeing the stats of who will get forty forty. I can see uh, being really expensive to buy like the forty forty challenge on hardcore. And uh, yeah, I think it's very cool, but. It's something very few people will kill on hardcore, I think. But I think that's fine as well. Yeah, do you think it's a lot more doable on softcore? For yeah, like a, with like six averagely and dedicated stuff. Player? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a yeah. very fair fight with uh, without the two issues I was speaking about. If those two got fixed, I think it's a very fair fight. Learnable and uh, well-balanced with damage and tank. Yeah, how do you feel about the ad phase with Zana? I like it, yeah. I didn't really think about it anything in particular. It's just yeah, it's it's decent. It is um those those mobs are pretty tanky that get spawned from that portal, right? Do you feel like it might be a bit of a DPS check for some builds? Yeah, but I think the entire shaper fight is a very DPS uh DPS check. I don't feel I don't feel forced to BCI. I feel like uh maybe forced to BCI if you want to regularly farm it on hardcore. Mm. Which is why I don't want to particularly try it again on my Ancestral War Chief because it's so easy to fuck up and get one hit by something. I could probably, like, I have done quite a lot of deathless back to back kills in softcore, but especially with the, like, the machine gun balls, it's pretty easy to get those from inside the beam and you can't really see them. You don't really have enough time to react. So obviously, CI gives you an advantage there, but uh, it's, it's a massive DPS check. Like, I'd say you need at least 300k DPS. On most skills that's uh that's hard to kind of compare between skills yeah though, right? yeah i, I guess <laughs> like i was using uh ancestor war chief totem and they were like 130k unbuffed so yeah. probably around 400k and that's he kills it pretty fast yeah well that, that's a that's a lot of dps you can get with those totems <laughs> it's pretty crazy yeah so and they, fight, they, face they make the the ad stage pretty easy that's why when you brought it up i didn't really think about it because i just saw my totems down yeah. and they instantly taunt and kill everything that comes out yeah i was i'm testing a righteous fire build at the moment i'm thinking that i can probably get the damage on this good enough to kill most things but i wonder if i'd be able to kill the adds fast mm. enough to be able to survive the bubble phase on it and i don't think i would be able to on righteous fire like ever i don't think that's possible yeah. <laughs> saying the build the build's just completely limited from doing that fight yeah that's actually something i find surprising it's i think quite a lot of builds are very limited to do the fight I think it's going to be mm -hmm. very hard for actual melee. I'd be very impressed to see someone like, oh, I killed Shaper with Heavy Strike on Harker. I'd be like, wow. <laughs> like, this guy <laughs> should get 20 free supporter packs. That's insane. <laughs> Damn. That's uh, that's pretty good. <laughs> I reckon Hedgy would have a crack at yeah, that. He's a pretty big fan of the uh, true melee action. Okay, so as a bit of a follow-up, and you kind of touched on it a bit, how do you feel about the whole life versus CI debate? Uh, apparently, Path of Life nodes is dead. It's all CI now. Yeah, you can't survive I, anything I feel unless you're CI. like, for example, when I'm choosing my uh, character, I want to push one character to level 100 this league, and I really do want to push Cyclone to level 100, because that's sort of my flagship character. It's what I started streaming with as well. And 
The problem is it's usually life-based. I don't particularly want to do CI Cyclone Slayer. I don't feel like it scales well enough. So I'm a little worried because if you're doing 13 to 16 maps, Volatiles have a pretty big chance of one banging if you get it on a high uh, main hand damage mob. So yeah, I, it does feel a little forced to do CI if you want to rely or like not to do it like once or twice. And I'm not saying you have to be, but it gives you a very, very nice buffer where you don't get one shot. It's um, so it's more about those kind of like surviving those edge case scenarios yeah. than like the volatile and that sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. Which, so that's more of a hardcore concern. Then do you think like yeah, that life base? Yeah, I, I feel is... like life base is very viable in softcore because yeah, I think you could even you can easily get level hundred characters on life, but you have a decent chance on on the way there having a freak accident happen that CI would protect you from, which sure yeah. like dying once or even two times on the road to hundred software yeah it sucks to lose that much experience but it's not the end of the world what do you think needs to change do you think ci needs to get weaker or life needs to get some sort of addition to it other forms of mitigation maybe i think life needs to have a percentage mitigation per thousand hp or something interesting so just kind of like a hidden boost to the amount of life you have yeah basically yeah well they don't even necessarily need to be or maybe even like some sort of protection. I feel like the biggest problem is volatiles. So some sort of protection against volatiles would be one of the main things. Like it's just very weak against one shots. I know this is your AMA, Ziz, but I'm going to love it with you, bro. I think volatile is a BS mechanic. Yeah. The scaling with every single damage mod on the map and the on the mob and that, it's just like sometimes you just can't possibly, even as a CI build, survive them. Like yeah. when I hit that triple damage double map mod Devara volatile, nothing will survive that. <laughs> uh, the thing that annoys me the most about volatile is that you can't block it in with spell block. And I didn't know this until yeah. the last day or the leg before, because I had a max block flame blaster and I was running around with uh, a guardian support with triple purities. So we were rolling some crazy maps that I usually wouldn't do, but my support was like, oh dude, we can go insane maps. And I usually prefer one damage mod or less. Uh, he was like, dude, we can do it. I have triple purities. We'll be fine. So I'm in this like, crazy triple or four damage mod map. I have 7k life and 7 or 8k yeah, something. I was like, I was very high actual like defense. Boom. Volatile. And I was like, ah, what the fuck? Why didn't I block that? Effective life? Yeah, and I was like, why Damn. didn't I block that? And everyone in my chat was like, oh my god, you knew we can't block volatiles. And I really didn't know that. And there's, unless you're told by someone else, there's really no need no way you can know like what can be blocked and what can because i thought they worked the same way as bearers because bearers can be spell blocked and i actually love mm. bearers as a mechanic i think it's great yeah yeah bearers is like what volatiles should be and what then they did should be yeah there I should reckon. be a warning there should be like a yeah. two second warning or something about you're dead how this is this is a more of a rhetorical question, but how good would it be if like the they started like glowing yeah. and shit, like started puffing up before they exploded, right? Like the corpse is actually like building up with energy and then exploding, so you had that warning. Yeah, we can dream, is we can dream. Well, they might do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hope so because volatile and detonate dead seem like. How do you feel about detonate dead? Have you had any runnings with it? Uh, I I like detonate dead. I've died to it uh, several times, and I feel like it's a aptly punishing mechanic. It should maybe be limited in range, because you can mm. currently be off-screen by it, which I don't feel is necessarily fair. I think I've seen you get <laughs> off-screen by it. Um, yes. <laughs> I don't like the Val DD nerf from chests. I don't feel you can die to it anymore. Interesting. I dislike yeah, that. Yeah, okay. And it's something you really only die to with A, party members fucking you over, which is hilarious. It's great video material as well. So definitely wanted more of that and then uh yeah it just felt like it was a good mechanic makes great videos so why do you feel that uh dd is aside from the range issue a fair mechanic compared to volatile and it's really quite similar in functionality well i guess but you can actually see it most of the time like okay with beyonds it's a little sketch but for example i died to i was doing a conservatory we're now called mace with sci tv and there was a DD totem there. We were kind of tired. We didn't notice it, but we should have. It was totems on the map. It's one of the main things to check for. So I feel like we were mm. aptly punished and we died. I lost a ridiculous amount of gear, but you know, it's that was our fault for not taking the totem. 
Yeah, okay. So apart from like with Volatile, you can read the mod on the rare, but how often does that happen? Yeah, it's and uh, but you can actually see the corpses, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, no, that's fair. That's fair. Maybe I, guess I, think I can if if I was going to change anything to DD, I would have maybe a two second cooldown on the corpse entering the ground until it can be detonated. Mm, okay, so they then, can't drop and instantly explode. Yeah, because then you could have a support, then you could reward the player with skill. Say, because uh, Psy TV would have like. Or I would have Castle Damage taken Flesh Offering, and he would have Flesh Offering as a skill and actually use it to prevent it. Yeah. So then you would actually be okay. rewarding the players for removing corpses. And they had like a second or two, even if it's just one second, you're rewarding the player for bringing another skill and being tactical about it. As opposed to yeah, like, this... oh, you didn't notice that instantly? What character are you going to do next? <laughs> yeah, no, I like that idea that you get a chance to react to it as well, which is that's really cool. I like that idea. That would yeah. be awesome. So that that change and volatile change and then like guild changes. They're they're my three hopes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Um, did you say guild changes? Yeah. Okay. Please elaborate on that. Actually, I'm I have more that. than two hundred and fifty slots in my guild. <laughs> Your bigger bigger guild. Yeah, and there's no <laughs> okay. permissions. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like there's some like relatively easy changes that could be made that would be very big quality of life. And it is a community game. We have a very good community in Path of Exile. And there are a lot of people in guilds. Yeah, I think that it's been a mechanic that has, hasn't really been given much love by GGG. How's it? The whole guild thing. Yeah. So like guild loves for someone taking something out of the guild bank. Obviously, there's a lot of people who will like be more tempted to take stuff out like he's sitting there and it's like, oh, there's a there's a eighty four sixing Valrogal in a guild stash. Swoop, that's mine now. Yuck. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. Okay. Stuff like that would be good changes and and guild slots. I, especially when it's uh like I'm I'm happy to continue paying for more slots. So I don't see why it's gated at two fifty being the max when there is a payment cap behind it. Like realistically. How many people are going to spam their guild up to 500 or 1,000 slots? So you, you, what you're saying basically is GGG is just stopping you from giving them money? Yeah. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> you know, shut up and fix this code and take my money. <laughs> okay, all right. Fair enough. Uh, the next question is from Sanjo Fair Justice. How much time do you spend playing PoE? Have you considered any other career? Or how does this addiction slash profession affect your daily life? Um, until I started streaming, I didn't really know, like, I, I've always wanted to do, uh, I sort of, I was very curious about acting, and I like talking to people, and uh, I, I studied computer science, so I was obviously thinking about, like, developing something, but I, I sort of fell out with programming, so the more and more I thought about it, the less and less I actually wanted to develop games or apps and stuff like that. And then uh, my uh, one of my like good gaming friends, Silva, was like, "Dude, you really should stream," but it's it's not a super realistic dream to have. Like you see all these streamers on Twitch, and like you'll open up even Path of Exile, and there'll probably be a few hundred people, and a lot of them will have zero to three viewers. So it's not a super realistic dream to be like starting from scratch, no YouTube following, and go like, "I'm gonna stream for a living. Let's go." So yeah, I was sort of lost and didn't really know what I wanted to do, and then. Uh, tried streaming and it worked out there's a there's a follow-up question here somewhere about if uh poe if new zealand got exploded or something by a meteor and uh poe ceased to exist what would you do uh i'd be sad be very sad (laughs) Um, obviously (laughs) i mean do they not have backups in other countries damn okay (laughs) I mean, I think it's safe to say that if New Zealand got meteored, that uh, the game would probably cease to exist. Um, That's kind of beside the point. The okay, main right, question right. about um, what would you do if Fury wasn't a thing anymore? I don't know. Like, <laughs> right now, there's no game that really stands out to me. There's no game that I would be like, fuck, I will play this then. Kind of thing. Uh, I guess Darkest Dungeon, I really enjoyed playing that. But yeah, there's no game that really bounces at me that I would want to play. Overwatch was quite fun to play, but I don't think it's a great streaming game. Mm. So you'd kind of just bounce around until you found something, you think? Yeah, I think I think it would have to. I'd have to find a new game that really like stood out to me. 
Yeah, okay. Uh, so as a similar follow-up question, uh, Twitch HQ got meteored, <laughs> and they, all their backup servers also got meteored, uh, and and Twitch streaming was no longer a thing. What would, what would you do then? Uh, I would try to get into some other form of media. Maybe TV. I really like talking to people. I love like stuff like this. is a lot of fun, like AMAs and... Definitely enjoy working with other people as well. So I would try to get into some some form of media, or maybe focus on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. So you kind of you kind of do like a bit of a, a side switch. There's not some other like wildly different profession you have an interest in. Yeah. I mean, another big thing for me, and I, like I get asked a lot, how come I don't burn out? Was uh, I really like interacting with my Twitch chat? It's probably one of my yeah. It makes my day a lot of the time as well. It's, so I have a lot of fun with that. So it's a lot easier not burn out of a game when I'm having so much fun with my Twitch chat as well. Yeah, okay. I, I think I, I think that answer pretty much comes up a lot these days with people who are have been streaming for quite a while and have been doing quite a bit of it, is that, uh, you know, you, you'd find something else similar, really, that kind of ticked the same boxes. Yeah. Because, I mean, we're obviously doing this because we've fallen in love with the aspects of it. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of makes sense. And I love attention. It's great. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you have to you have to look, have a little bit of an ego to be a successful oh, streamer. Oh, definitely, definitely. A little bit of self love is uh, important. So Ziz, uh, fuck Mary kill uh, Zizarin, PC child, and uh, I don't know how to pronounce your actual name. Yeah, did. <laughs> that yeah, one. Did. Yeah, did. <laughs> yeah, mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. With the PC child thing. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna ask about that actually. Tell, so for people who don't who don't know, uh, what's the what's the deal with PC Child? Why, so I had why is your no, Twitch handle different? I had no idea how important Twitch names were, at all. Like just just no idea, because I hadn't really been on Twitch that much, and uh, like I've been watching a few streamers as well. Like obviously when I was playing Path of Exile and before, but obviously I hadn't gotten into especially like the professional side of things, and I didn't really understand branding or anything like that. So it was just a name I've used in other games. And then the first character name I had was Zizarin. So I was like, oh, you know what? People started like seeing me on the ladder as Zizarin. So I started using that more. And it was a game. It's, I've been using it a lot more in games like when I started streaming. And then uh, a few of my friends were like, you really should like start streaming on a new channel. Because like, it's actually going pretty well. You have like 300 followers or 400 followers. And I was like... Yeah, but I have three or four hundred followers. I don't want to start over again. That's so many people. <laughs> yeah, so I know. <laughs> I was sitting there at three thousand, and those friends are still like, "You really should switch over. This is a bad idea." And I'm sitting here at twenty thousand, or about to hit twenty thousand, and yeah, I really regret not switching at three hundred. <laughs> Yeah, it never it never becomes a better time to do that switch. So many people are in the same position you're in. I mean, even me to an extent. My my Twitter is Ziggy Starcraft, and my YouTube is Ziggy Starcraft. Yeah. I, don't, I don't do anything to do with Starcraft anymore. Yeah, I was like, I wish I'd changed that earlier. God damn. Yeah. But uh, now you got like 500 subs, man. So it's too late Crazy. now. It's only like 525 <laughs> or 526. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty insane, man. It's so pretty on pretty that insane. topic, then, how long have you been streaming? I am uh, about to have my one year anniversary as a streamer in six days. The 2nd of October is my one year anniversary. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty crazy. I didn't really uh, Do... expect it to take off that fast. Yeah, are you doing anything special for your one year? Um, I'm, I was going to do at least a 24 hour stream and I was going to see how long can I stream stream. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so that could be interesting. <laughs> Don't become another statistic, Ziz. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, like, X the main... number of streamers have The have main thing for me is <laughs> if I feel bad or sick in any way, I stop. No matter if I'm number one on the ladder, like, health comes first. What do you do to manage health as you're doing long streams? I'm curious. Um, Havoc gave me a lot of tips on that, actually. Because the, I, he saw me a lot of the early pushes where I was just no life. And yeah, it was doing really well and pushing it. But uh, I was like, oh, I feel like dying. So uh, yeah, and I I'd said to Havoc that sometimes I wasn't feeling good. And he gave me a lot of tips. Like um, protein bars, stuff like that. Drinking more water. And I've cut down heavily on the Red Bull. I mean, like, max drink, like... <laughs> Between one and three Red Bulls a day, which, yeah, I realize it's still quite a lot compared to a lot of people, but I feel like I'm cutting down from, like, eight, quite a big improvement. 
So yeah, I'm I'm definitely cutting down, and some days I don't even take Red Bull anymore, which is good. So yeah, I'm definitely trying to kick that. Um, eating. I'm really glad to hear that. <laughs> trying to eat more. I'm actually getting a lot more healthy now. Like even now that I'm still pushing pretty hard and doing long streams, I'm trying to cook. I cooked the last not today or yesterday, but the last four days before there, I cooked a meal each day. Uh, I've started working out. Lifting wants to give me some like tips on like working out as well. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, I'm starting to be healthier. Nice. Right, so have you, do you have any concerns about, like, RSI in particular is really bad for no. action RPG players? Like, no. I have injuries in my thumbs. From... Never had anything like that. The only thing, like, I've noticed it lately is I'm tensing my shoulders all the time. It seems to be something I've just started doing lately. And, um, I... Yeah, it's from this, right? Yeah. So in that kind of same yeah, position I'll, I'll the whole time. Yeah, I'll sit like this. And I don't realize. I've actually started realizing it a lot more lately. And uh, for those wondering, no, I don't have any holes in my teeth. I saw there was a lot of questions about that from the Red Bull. So uh, I was just <laughs> at the dentist, which is a miracle. But yeah, um, I found out there was just a massage. holes in your heart or something. <laughs> I found out there was a massage center literally a minute away or two minutes away. Like it's, I can walk there in less than two minutes. So that was great. And uh, So you've been just, just heating that up whenever you're kind of feeling a bit stiff? Yeah, twice. Well, I feel oh, like a bit stiff. There's going to be a lot of comments about that. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just, I just <laughs> ignore it these days. Anytime I say anything remotely, yeah, it, uh, Twitch chat gets onto it, of course. <laughs> That's good. Sometimes. That is, is really good. Definitely really good. Okay. Do you do any like preventative hand stretches or anything like that? Because that's something I'd wish I'd started doing earlier. Um, I have this. Hold on. Uh, I'll show you. Can't see this sadly. You'll see it soon. No, I, have I can't this, like, see wooden ball that I stole of my brother. Well, uh, I told my brother, oh, can I take this? And he said, yes, but it sounds more fun to say I stole it, which is, uh, <laughs> yeah, I use this whenever I'm like talking to people after stream and stuff like that. But other than that, I don't really do any like specific hand exercises. I've never had repetitive strain injury, but I've been playing games this much like for a very long time. Okay, it's, uh, I, I will say just as from personal, experience that it's better to be preventative with it than yeah. to uh, wait until you start feeling something. <laughs> I, I can believe that. Yeah, my, my, I got this kind of like strain in my thumbs now that I'm like, Ugh, and it just hasn't gone away. And you had some back away. injuries lately, right? Oh, yeah, the other day I injured my back. I'm feeling like an old man, man. I'm probably going to break my hip next. Well, I mean, like, you, you hosted me, and then people were saying, like, Ziz, have you heard from Ziggy? Is he okay? Is he dead? So, yeah, I did like a one hour stream and then just couldn't sit anymore. Yeah. I couldn't sit for more than an hour. For yeah, like three people are really straight. concerned, so I'm, uh, I'm glad you're better, man. Mm. I'm still, it's back still a little stiff, but I just don't, I don't know how that happened, man. I think it's just like, just general lack of exercise, and I hadn't, hadn't been doing much. So I used to stretch a lot, mm -hmm. and I hadn't been doing it in like a week or two, so I think kind of not stretching properly and, yeah. you know, eventually just caused a muscle injury, but uh, seems to be okay now. But That's good. It definitely, definitely kind of like, concerned me i was i was worried for a bit there yeah it's like oh god i haven't done something really bad have i <laughs> fucked up your back <laughs> yeah i'm becoming an old man how old are you Zee? i was about to ask that i was about to ask how old are you i am 27 and it's my birthday in uh yeah 27th october my birthday so no, less I, than a month i just turned 27 <laughs> really i'm older yeah. than you yeah oh. i turned 27 july oh <laughs> I don't. I don't think I would have picked it about either of us. I don't yeah. think I'd pick me as being twenty-seven or you as being twenty-seven. <laughs> yeah, I think we're both like twenty-three, twenty-four, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Um, I did have another follow-up question on an early topic, but we really kind of just followed a bit of a. We went down the rabbit hole a bit there. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's good. Um. Oh yeah, about like your success in streaming. Less than a year you've been streaming for now, and you have over five hundred subs. How many followers now? About a twenty thousand. Twenty thousand followers, and you're regularly streaming to over a thousand people. Sometimes, uh, quite a bit higher than that. Yeah, that's pretty insane, man. How how is uh, how has that growth like seemed to you? I guess. Um, I feel like until last month, it's been pretty stable, and uh, you know, I've sort of been able to, uh, like, you know, I can see it on a curve. Like, okay, it'll keep going like around this. And then the last month of Prophecy, 
not even like pretty much around when the hype started and uh, i was one of the few people like because obviously a lot of people stopped streaming path in the last month but i keep going uh it, the growth started crazy like crazy growth so uh i i couldn't really expect that it was, uh like obviously i like look at statistics and stuff uh now and again and uh it was growing really quickly like way more than i would expect so you kind of hit that exponential growth point what do you think uh do you think anything you did contributed to that what do you think you did that's sort of the thing i think it was just i was lucky with the timing that there weren't many other people streaming and there were a lot of people that came back um obviously i, I put out youtube videos which sometimes get on reddit and uh yeah that's it's so just, very good just being active at the right time i feel like was... the main thing being a streamer is consistency more than anything else it's consistency like if you can manage to stream not necessarily like crazy hours like 20 hours a day uh but if you can say you're streaming eight to ten hours a day or six to ten somewhere just like a random number but you have a set schedule and you can be very consistent with that like I think that's very beneficial. Taking a week off is crazy bad. Mm, I think uh, pretty much any any successful streamer will tell you consistency is like one of the number one things. Uh, and I'm pretty freaking inconsistent. <laughs> I could, could stand, definitely stand to learn from that, but I definitely agree with that. That's I'd say like, you are pretty consistent though, because you put out a lot of YouTube as well pretty consistently. You don't just do Twitch. Like I do very yeah, little YouTube. I guess so. Yeah, fair enough. So I guess when I'm not streaming, I'm also doing some yeah. something on YouTube. But I could, I could still definitely stand to be a lot more consistent. I could, I could, uh, I could learn something from users. <laughs> Maybe not the twenty hour stream thing. Yeah. But I think I'll stick with my like six to seven hours. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, as I said, like especially if you're staying in the same time zone, that's uh, less important. But I, I'm not very good at staying in time zones anyway, so it sort of works for me. Have you done p specific mindful things towards growing on Twitch? Like, towards being successful? Uh, well, whenever I've been playing, like, a build that a lot... Like, I, I'm pretty selective about what I do build guides on. Like, uh, for example, when I was playing Cock Discharge, people were like, are you going to make a guide for this? And I would usually just point to another guide. If it's uh, something I have a very special variant on, or something there isn't necessarily an up-to-date guide on, then yeah, I'll make a guide and... Most of the ones I have picked to do have done quite well as well. So, okay. So being selected with your build guides. Yeah. Um, and collabs with other like streamers as well. Like We've done stuff together and I've done stuff with other streamers. I remember, especially early on, I did a... And this was really good for my YouTube, which obviously feeds back into Twitch, was uh, I did my efficiency guide, but I did it with Yoji. And mm. I remember I had like alerts on for my YouTube and my phone just started blinking and I got 800 followers on YouTube in three hours. And I was like, what the hell? So uh, like, it's, it's very important to work with other people, which is another thing I love about the path of Excel streamer community that uh, there's like, there's no drama and everyone's pretty friendly with everyone. Yeah. Especially these days, it seems to be a lot less drama than before. huh? Yeah. I wouldn't really know about much before. What um what do you what do you kind of think about it? like a lot of the it seems like there was a lot of kind of the old older streamers that have left recently. Repeat the last bit again. There seems like there's a lot of the older streamers. So I guess probably oh. the ones that were before you started really like the the major streamers then all the top streamers seem to have seem to have left like or not be really streaming very much anymore if at all. Yeah, I mean. It can be very hard to play a game for so long and not get burned out on it, and I get that. Um, I usually uh, don't get burned out very easily on any game. So, like, I've, I've played this. is not, like, a game that I've played the most for me yet. By any mile, like, Darkfall and Evil Online, I would have poured, and World of Warcraft, I would have poured, like, way more time into, and I wasn't really... I actually quit World of Warcraft because it was sort of debilitating my life. But... Uh, yeah, I, I think people just get burned out if they have to do something for that long. And it depends a lot of my enjoyment from it as well. It's, as I said earlier, part of my Twitch chat. So maybe if like, if you enjoy that less and you get a lot of the enjoyment out of the game itself, uh, at some point as a streamer, you can start feeling like, well, I really want to play this. It's like, fuck, Fallout 4 just came out. I really want to play it. But then I'll only get 20 viewers. 
you might feel forced to play a game and that'll make you enjoy it less as well. So I think that could have happened. Mm. Yeah, it seems like a lot of the like the people who have stopped streaming altogether didn't really have any other games or never really tried to step out from PoE and stream some other things. Mm -hmm. So when they eventually like it was like I just can't play PoE anymore. Yeah, it's uh they didn't really kind of have another thing to go to. See, so are you are you concerned about that at all? Like, do you worried that you'll get burnt out at some point because you play so much? <laughs> I'm not worried about burning out at all, but uh... yeah, no, I'm not really worried about that. Okay. What, what about you? Are you worried about that? Fair enough. Um, no, I think that I can I can manage my interest in PoE just by taking by just by playing other games. Mm. Like my my approach is that uh, I'm thinking of doing like a like a themed month where I play other games towards the end of each season. So I will be kind of like doing other things. I think as long as I keep playing other games and occasionally streaming other stuff and taking breaks from PoE that. I'm always going to be interested in returning to Peewee because mm -hmm. it's always going to it's always going to call me back whenever there's new stuff going on that sort of thing and you know race seasons and all that keep calling me back so yeah I so I would burn out if I kept playing Peewee yeah. as much as you did though mm -hmm. yeah absolutely I think I think another any type of game that I would maybe like to play would probably be virtual reality something I'd be heavily interested in um, mostly because it freaks me the hell out. <laughs> I, a friend of mine let me try it and i i was on the floor literally like i i'm really jumpy so uh they actually uh did a jump scare on me while i was playing it and i like lost my footing and i just fell because he it was like a really scary game and then he did like rah scared me i lost it <laughs> bit hard to stream vr games though isn't it that's i can't figure yeah. out that problem like I want to do some VR stuff, but you can't. I can't really figure out how to yeah, stream it. I feel that's be better good. for YouTube. Yeah, just for like little videos with editing and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the Twitch interaction with the chat and stuff is very important, which you, it's going to be hard to do. <laughs> yeah, you need to like code a virtual chat or something for yeah. you to look at. Next to speech. Yeah. <laughs> Someone mentioned that to me yesterday. Some, do a text to speech of every comment in chat. Could you imagine? <laughs> I joke about that a lot because there's, uh, there's jokes that I can't read after the other reflect map, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, speaking of, there was a question about that. Oh. It, was, it was a reading comprehension question. I don't think it made it into the questions talk because it wasn't really a question so much. It's probably hard to do. It was reading comprehension of a list of map mods. Oh, I would have failed uh, what, is, what is the one to look for? <laughs> oh, I would have failed it. It was probably min, max, or other reflect there. Yeah, I think it was both. Oh, all right, yeah. It's just... <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, all right. Well, I have some uh, some questions about uh, something that has become somewhat of a meme, uh, Ziz, and that is that is you dying in Path of Exile. Uh, the Onan would like to know, what's the worst way you've ever ripped? Um, worst as in the one I've hated the most, or worst as in like the stupidest. I like I like the question of uh, what, what death has affected you the most negatively, but I think his question is more: what is the stupidest or worst way you've died? Well, like the death you've been, been like, oh my god, I can't believe I died that way. Huh. Good question. Not 100%. Can't think of that one. Anything? Uh, well, I mean, the one that like upset me the most, or at least like frustrated me the most, was the Invisible Wolves Red World. Where he starts casting his invisible wolves while I'm off screen, I, I I didn't know that was a thing. Like obviously, if I had played two years ago a lot more, then people would have um, like I mean I would have been clued onto that. If something started off screen, you can't see it when you get on screen. So I didn't twig on when my mortal call propped off. I thought I must have just stepped on something. So yeah, when I died to that, I was like, really? What? What? Oh, okay. Um, yeah. The stupidest. There's, there's a lot, man. Not a lot. But I mean, <laughs> that's what Chad's saying. So many choices. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably vegan. I was like, that was dumb. It, it's mostly like maps that I've rolled too hard. I think there's been like three or four where I've just the map has been crazy, and like pause would message me on Skype being like, the fuck? Were you bored of your character? <laughs> and it's like four four damage mod min map, min max and uh, yeah I don't know like you make bad decision after you've been awake thirty hours, 
And like, yeah, I, I realized that I do have quite a lot of rip videos, but I do also play quite a lot more than most people. Let's I was going to say, point that out. <laughs> yeah, like those rips are over like 4,000, maybe 4,500 even hours. I don't feel like they're too bad. I don't feel like, oh my God, I die all the time. It's just because I play so much, I'm going to get back up to the dying stage more often. Yeah, and... you just play four characters in the time someone else plays one, normally. <laughs> and yeah, and the other thing Your play is... playtime's probably the same. I read Go Twitch chat a lot. In a lot of my deaths, you can see that I'm distracted or looking at my Twitch chat. Or like the one time I died to the Volatile in the waterways, I'm people are like, hmm, what would you design if you were going to design a unique item? And I started thinking about it and like, explaining it. And so I wasn't really paying attention that it was a Volatile. I definitely would say that it's a lot more things you have to pay attention to as a streamer. And I used to die a lot less before. Before you streamed or before you yeah. um, had a more active chat? I guess yeah. both. Like, I obviously fuck up loads as well. But it, de it definitely comes in that you do have to read chat. Rip chat. Yeah. Get the blame. Under, under the bus. <laughs> What, uh, Zaniac26 would like to know, what are some funny ways to die? What do you think is one of the most entertaining ways to die? Um, I really like the, uh, the Val Conservator rip where I was with a nice shot. And, uh, cause it's a beautiful thing that could, uh, that could happen. It was a, a blasphemer ghost versus me with elemental weakness. And then we had just made it to like high map. So I didn't have anywhere near gear for elemental weakness. And um, what happened was, yeah, I get cursed with elemental weakness, and then he possesses Val. So as soon as he comes back up, he beams me, and I had like 20 lightning rests. So I just get insted. It was just such a perfect synergy of him Ellie weaknessing me, ghosting the boss, and then coming back up and shooting me. And I was like, what? So I think that's probably my favorite rip. I just realized my stupidest rip is definitely the uh, mid-max Ellie reflect. Definitely my... Uh, can't believe I died to this. That actually, like, beat me up so much. What uh, what what happened there for people who haven't seen so it? So I uh, I was rolling air maps. I'd been awake thirty six or thirty five hours, <laughs> and I I don't I wasn't linking them in chat, which is a good habit to have when you're in a team. And Blue actually entered the map before me, but he didn't really notice either. He just figured we were rolling pretty safe maps at that point. Um, I I just saw the min max. I didn't see the other reflect. So I 10 stack on the first pack in the game and I just go, <gasps> oh, oh no. I realized instantly what had happened as well. And Blue was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I'm retarded. I feel like I've heard that, that inhale that you do. <laughs> yeah. That Ziz inhale. That's about to be Is one that... of the next emotes. Is gas. <laughs> Is that... Okay, good. I feel like, yeah, it just brings back memories of every rip mod I've ever watched of you. It's just that gasp. <laughs> yeah. I feel like if I had like log out on gasp, I would, well, I would never complete a laboratory, but I would never die either. <laughs> like, oh, some, sometimes you die before the gasp, though. The gasp yeah. comes as a reaction yeah. to the unexpected Definitely death, would so. save me a lot of times, though. Yeah, okay. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, I think that's all for the, I think that's all for the rip ones. Has there been a, has there been a rip that you were pissed at the, at the time, but looking back on it's pretty funny? Any extra one? Hmm. None, none that really stand out to me. There's so many to think about. I really have you ever had one of those rips where you're like, that was, that was awesome? Actually, no, <laughs> the vegan one is probably like the most hilarious one. Be I'm okay. so happy it happened because the way it happened is uh, I thought I had my flask ready and stuff, but that's another rip I was very, very tired of. But um, what happened is he says, who taught you how to fight? Your mum. And then he one hits me just as he finishes the <laughs> sentence. And I was just like, I'm not even angry. As soon as someone pointed that out to me, I was like, I'm just so happy I died. It actually looks like the sound has been put on later. It's that perfect. Like, Your mum. <laughs> oh. It's so funny because Fagan is so often a pushover, but every now and then he just, he like hits so very hard. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> he fucking wrecked you. The only one that I that was like genuinely upset over was actually a low level rip. I died at level sixty, and I op I yolo open a, a box, and I'm pretty pretty safe with like, you know, I can either inst I always have a freeze potion. I'm always pretty fast at either not killing things or running away from DD. I haven't actually died to a box before. 
uh, while streaming. Uh, but what happened was I opened a box and it crashed me. And it was a DD freeze box, but I hit my like freeze mm -hmm. potion. Nothing happened. I logged down and I was dead. So that that one really that one really stung, and I was like, that's really shit. Like that like I know that I, I do race, so level sixty is like four to five hours. That's still a shitty way to go. Yeah. I had like three of those in a row one season where I, I like just as I was just getting the end game, I had some like bullshit load screen death or something like three times in a row. Yeah. It just, it, and I never had that before. Yeah. It's so brutal as a way to die. And I get what you're feeling. Like, I get what you're saying. Even though it was only like four or five hours of leveling, it's still like, just still so cheap. Yeah. Well, oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, Upfront Finn, as a little bit of a change of pace, would like to know, what's your perfect Sunday like, Ziz? Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> I'm perfect Sunday do now? Do you do anything that's not at the computer? <laughs> no. My life is streaming right now. Like, if I'm if I'm not streaming right now... Well, I mean, I'm hanging out with friends would be nice. I have, like, like Rose, the girl who dyed my hair, and, uh... Maid. <laughs> Fuck it, like, I do hang out with people. But there's not a lot of time for it anymore. Generally, if I'm not streaming, I'll be either doing YouTube videos, doing like tutorials for like, because I want to learn how to edit better. I don't really want to rely on other people for editing. So I'm trying to practice that a lot in my spare time. Do you, uh, so basically like a, a fresh tub of hair dye and a, a fresh Red Bull? Yeah. Would be, and some good friends? Definitely right now. I mean,. <laughs> if, if, like, just regardless of streaming, it would be uh, a movie night with my best friends. It would definitely be a perfect Sunday. Okay. On that topic, uh, Jessiak wants to know, what color next? Um, I haven't really thought about dyeing it again. I never thought I was going to dye it at all. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. I don't We might. We might. If there's, like, a big demand, maybe. But uh, I was even surprised that this turned out half decent. Was, I've never dyed my hair before. I was actually pretty against it when someone brought it up. And then oh, I sack it up and let's try it. That's you eventually, eventually committed to it though? Never dyed my beard again. Thankfully it grew out really fast. But it turned my <laughs> whitey ginger and it was horrible. <laughs> but like, you can't nice. really even see it on cam now. And it, it wasn't as bad on stream. And if you if you watch the video of the beard dying, it looked horrible. And uh, in person, it looked. I was embarrassed to pick up pizza and stuff from delivery people. <laughs> Jeez, okay. Don't even want to like antsy door for pizza. Basically, like, can you slide it on the door? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> I have to before you open the door. I have to warn you. I'm not very attractive. <laughs> I'm repulsive. Please don't run. <laughs> Just don't take my, don't drop my pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Colin Survive wants to, uh, now there's a follow-up question to that. Do the curtains match the drapes? No. Was... This is, of course, talking about your house decoration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Actually, my, my curtains are over there. I'm actually going to buy new ones. But I found out you have to know measurements. But, uh, yeah, real life stuff. No, they do not. They, uh, they were not part of the sub goal. <laughs> Will they originally be no. a sub goal? Plan? No, I think With... that's too far. <laughs> it's too far. Okay, all right. I was wondering where the line was. So like the beard thing surprised me. I mean, but okay. <laughs> yeah. But the uh, okay. So just just head hair is the is the limit then. And no eyebrows. Apparently that's dangerous with bleach near your eyes and stuff. Mm, yeah, that, running it down your eyeballs probably not a good oh, idea. Fun, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, Tyrexus wants to know, back to the serious questions, do you think the leveling process should be more challenging so that end game difficulty comes back soon after a rip rather than having to first mindlessly grind to Merc Lake without having to engage your brain? Uh, that was a little convoluted. I guess he's asking more, do you think the leveling process should be f fast and easy or difficult and challenging? Hmm. Uh, well, as someone who has to repeat it, Quite a lot. I wish there was an <laughs> alternate choice. I would actually... Okay, so what? ideally for me, it would be difficult and hard. But with some sort of... Once you hit level 70, 80, 90, there's thresholds. Like unlocking all the waypoints. Or an alternate skill system. So say... 
Say I kill Malachi in normal, I unlock an endless ledge type system for my next characters in normal. Say I kill Malachi in cruel, I etc. Like just a different system, because especially as someone who does play up to ten to thirty characters, like ten, probably ten to twenty characters a league, I definitely get bored of doing the same exact things three times over and over again. I would like an alternative, easier system for further in the league. It sounds like you more want, like, just a way to not have to deal with all the quests and stuff, less than making leveling easy. Yeah. Yeah, I, okay. I'm okay with it being difficult as well. Don't really mind. But uh, I love the storyline, but I feel it takes a lot away from it. They have to complete it so many times. Even giving mm. out waypoints could be, like, a massive, massive boost. Yeah, like, kind of like a, a season-wide ledge unlock. Sorry, uh, waypoint unlock system. Yeah. Once you can defeat the boss okay yeah yep. all right um tch, 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 tch. what was i up to I lost my place uh what are your this is from coach 83 what are your top tips for staying focused for long periods when leveling a lot of people i get that question a lot actually a lot of people kind of like how do you how do you keep yourself motivated to get through the leveling process that sort of thing i think as i mentioned earlier as well like streaming helps a lot with that like i don't just have to focus on like oh i'm doing act too cruel now I don't really like Act 2 Cruel, but I have my my, uh, my chat to talk to and stuff like that. So, like, say, like, talking to friends would be uh, pretty important. So you're saying in order to make the leveling process uh, enjoyable, you just need to get a thousand people to talk to? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. I mean, Sick bad. I mean, obviously, I was doing this before as well, and I, I yeah, I don't know. It's more when it's a very repetitive thing it becomes a problem. Mm. Bit hard, bit hard to answer that. Okay. Uh, Similar-ish sort of question for earlier game and game from Saskia Jens, uh, Jensen. Uh, what advice can you give for someone that gets annoyed slash bored with mapping in low tiers? I especially dislike the repetitiveness and have always quit the leagues before level eighty. Hmm. Uh, try to invest more into buying maps. I feel like a lot of people. Especially, uh, like, I get that you have to build your own map pool early on in the league. But I see a lot of complaints about maps um, two, or th two or three or four weeks into the league. People are like, dude, I'm really struggling building my map pool. And I was like, have you bought maps? And they're like, no. <laughs> a lot of people haven't looked at the map prices. And you can buy, even buying, like, one tier 8, one tier 10, you can, like, kickstart your map pool so massively. I feel like going out of your race, spending some currency on buying maps is massive. Oh, that's I'll, I'll, I'll echo that. A lot of people seem really like vehemently against the idea of buying some maps. And I spent 10 chaos the other day because my I just was blanking on tier 11s. I spent 10 chaos and just bought like a bunch of maps that I hadn't completed, tier eights to 11. And uh, and since then I've you know I've got a really solid map pool going. I mean 10 mm. chaos is like yep. whatever. Yeah, <laughs> that was like that was for like a pack of like 15 maps. I mean. Oh yeah, no, it's uh, very very cheap to buy maps now. Not yeah. Funny. I love the new system as well. It's so much fun. It's, but I'm looking forward, really forward, to the start of the next league. I feel like red maps might, might have been slightly overtuned. I feel like the white to yellow progression is pretty good now that they made it easier. Especially if you don't have... Um, if you don't have, like, uh, a group to help you unlock. And uh, maybe they should do the white to yellow progression actually even easier. Because there's still a lot of people who want to do it, like, cell phone and stuff. So I feel making the red map progression slightly harder, but the white and yellow is a lot easier. So it's like you have to be pretty hardcore to get into. Actually, that sounds wrong. But yeah, I feel like the red maps are a little bit... Once you do get to tier 15s and 16s, I would be very surprised if anybody ran out of tier 11s. Like, say, they have 110 unlocks, 100 unlocks. I'd be very surprised. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you're excited for the next season now that you yeah. kind of know, know what you know? Oh, yeah, for sure. About the map system? Yeah, cool. Yeah, I am too. I really enjoyed exploring the Atlas this season. Uh, scratch here for items. What was the most satisfying build you've ever played? Cyclone, hands down. Really? Yeah, okay. I love Cyclone. It wouldn't be my topic. <laughs> it's, uh, it's something about a skill where I have... I feel so mobile and in charge of where my character is while I'm attacking... It's no, like, standing still, like, with Firestorm, especially with Spell Echo, where you lose control of your character a little bit. It's so much, like, finesse for your character. And you're just, you're in charge the entire time. You're moving. 
it's uh, especially when you have like a decent like my cyclone or last day which had a fuck ton of gear into it it's a really fun powerhouse it scales really well with endgame gear hmm. so yeah okay cyclone. i really enjoyed reeve as well yeah i really like reeve too but these days it's uh it seems seems difficult to play it in anything but like a really high dps softcore assassin build or something mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, you need to do a lot of damage with Reeve for yeah, it to feel good. Yeah, the main problem with Reeve is it's very hard to get uh, HP. I feel like you never get enough life. Um, yeah. So you're basically forced to go CI Reeve if you want to do super endgame. Or just have mad skills and be awake the entire time. Okay, what's the secret to good, to good cycling plan, to enjoying it? I don't know, like... Something, like, a lot of people will be like, oh, one click build. But I find that very enjoyable because it, I felt I could communicate a lot more with my Twitch chat while playing Cyclone than when I was playing Valspark, especially because I was very new to CI and I was basically, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, potion management. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, my energy shield, I have no potions. It was so scary, like, when I'd never played CI before or low life and having to, like, this whole new system. So I felt like... I missed so many questions when I switched. Whereas with Cyclone, it's like, I could sort of look over on my screen and just keep spinning. And I was like, yeah, Cyclone takes care of this shit. It's great. So that's another thing so, I really enjoyed about it. <laughs> it's like a watching Netflix on your other monitor type build as well? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoy that. <laughs> slightly, just slightly gently memeing there. Just a little bit. Uh, if you could visit one place in the world, where would it be from Doc BP87? Uh, Bora Bora. What is, where, where's Bora Bora? I don't remember exactly where that. it is. It's just, I looked up a lot of pictures to it, and it's, you can't actually get there directly by plane. You have to do, and my geography skills is bad. It looks really nice. So, I really want to go there. It's just not really, like, any, like, super logical reason for why. Well, yeah, my top three places have always been Bora Bora, Vegas, and uh, Tokyo. Been like the mm. three places that stood out to me the most. Okay, there is a follow-up question about how you like where you're living now. Like, what's the pros and cons of where you're living now? Uh, um, I can't figure out find who it was from. So I moved. For those of you who don't know, I moved to Belfast, Northern Ireland, when I was either eighteen or just turned nineteen. I've lived here for probably eight years now. I actually wrote five in my bio, but I found out I moved here in two thousand and eight. Real life. Um <laughs> so and I moved here because I already had friends here and I really wanted to uh live live and study in an English speaking country and I always really enjoyed speaking English. So that is a massive like pro for me. I'm not like yeah, I, I get to speak English every day, which I, I love speaking English. Um Another thing is it's uh, it's in the UK, which I wanted to live in, and it's still very, very cheap. Like London, for example, is very expensive. So living as a streamer, for example, in London would be really hard. Whereas Belfast mm. has like the lowest minimum wage, I think, in the UK. And everything is relatively cheap as well. So it's much more like, for example, I was living in Thailand and something. That would also be a really good place to live as a streamer. Because your your income is the same relatively of where you live. It doesn't matter if I live on a mountain or, you know, as long as I have a good internet connection, that's all I need. Yeah. So uh, that that's definitely a, a big pro. And everyone is so friendly here. Like, uh, I feel like in Norway, people are very hesitant to speak to strangers. Like, say you're sitting next to someone at, a, at the subway or at a bus. People won't speak to you that much, at least in Oslo. And yeah, I get that that's a big city thing as well. But even here in Belfast, people like talk to you just in subway and just everywhere. Like I asked someone for direction once and it was like 30 minutes away. And the guy was like, oh, I'm walking there. You can just walk with me. And I walked with them and chatted for like 30 minutes. Like people are so friendly here. It's insane. Damn. So socializing. <laughs> I love it. I love people. <laughs> Australia's kind of a mixed bag for that. Yeah. Like Sometimes you get that, but not not around where I live. Do you live in a big city? Mm, kind of like a small ru rurish city. How many people are we talking? Uh, I don't know the numbers of how many people live here, but like a a small city, right? Oh. No, no, no tall buildings. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's not sort of a city, a flat city. <laughs> no, it sounds pretty nice, man. I like it. You should move here, yeah. streamer house. <laughs> 
how, how when you're talking cheap, how cheap are you talking for like rent on that? Um, how much do you pay at the moment? So yeah, I, I just got a little unlucky with that because my flatmate was moving out. So I, I'm in a pretty nice apartment that I'm very happy with. Um, and it was £390 a month. And then my flatmate moved out and I had two people that were considering moving in. And uh, one of them was pretty sure. And then they both pulled out. So I currently don't have anyone moved in. And uh, yeah, so it doubled. So that was a little unfortunate. So it's still like the same, it's still less than what I would be paying in Norway and less than I would be paying in London, but uh, definitely my rent went up a lot there. Uh, food and stuff would be pretty cheap, like a takeaway, like say kebab would be like five, six pound, stuff like that. So uh, you can get by on like quite a little like food wise and stuff. That doesn't sound particularly cheap to me, uh, doing like rough conversions in my head, but I think that's because uh, like compared to where you lived before, Australia would be cheap compared to that. So you're comparing to uh, expensive. So you're talking more like kind of like an average uh, cost of living place compared to, I wouldn't say super cheap or anything. Well, like student accommodation would be like 200, 180 to 220 pound a month, which okay. is pretty cheap, I'd say. Yeah, that's that's reasonably cheap. Okay. <laughs> Um, do you think you're going to try and like move to get a, a cheaper house? I feel like where you live is one of the biggest decisions you can make as a, uh, trying to go full-time streamer. Yeah, I feel like I definitely want to live, like, uh, I have one friend who will consider moving in in the next two months, which would help a lot, but we'll see. And then, um, that would obviously help a lot. But, uh, yeah, I definitely want to move in somewhere solo eventually. I feel like a lot easier for me to keep the patterns like sleeping patterns i do and stuff if i live alone and don't have to worry about like fuck i just woke my flatmate up like hey i find a mirror drop everyone in the block's gonna make up you know wake up <laughs> yeah it's uh living living alone is uh is pretty good <laughs> yeah i've had quite a few housemates now and uh yeah it's a lot easier to keep things clean when you live alone as well mm. yeah i really like it are you uh are you feeling comfortable as like a full time streamer now? Are you to that point where you feel like really secure in full time streaming? Yeah, I love it. I, I'm very, very happy with how things have been going and didn't really expect it. But uh yeah, definitely feeling pretty secure in full time streaming. Okay. Cool man. I'm going to uh follow on with some questions from Twitch chat. Sorry I hadn't gotten to you guys earlier, but we've kinda of had a, a nice long winding conversation. Yeah. Uh V Lusky asks, if you were to win one million dollars on the lotto, what would the money be spent on and why? Uh, buy the apartment I'm living in and pay back my student loans and buy a holiday for my parents. Okay. <laughs> so just basically like secure everything so you can just focus on streaming? Yep. And then continue doing what I'm doing. I kind of expected you to say pretty much exactly that. The holiday for your parents thing is very nice, though. Yeah, yeah no, was, I like was... my parents have support. Like, they've, I didn't think they were going to be supportive because gaming and making money off gaming is something I've wanted to do for a while. And I've talked about streaming in the past. And I would usually like run most of my life decisions past my parents, and I respect them a lot. But they had always been like, you need to finish uni. We are super against you not finishing uni. And obviously, especially when you're younger, that is a huge factor, like your parents' approval. Mm. So, yeah, that's one of the main reasons I finished uni. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I won't really know what would have happened if things were different. So I'm pretty happy with how things have turned out. This is just, just a bit of a thank you, then, for that support. That's yeah. nice, man. It's always good to know you have, like, a bit of a bit of a support network. People who kind of, like, understand a bit what you do. Yeah, no, do, do they understand what you do? Like, do they understand how it works? They didn't for a while, and I, my dad understands it a lot more than my mom, but they both tune in every day, which is sort of terrifying considering how I speak. But I, I do try to not really... I don't really change how I am depending on whether it's my grandmother that's listening, which she also tunes in on her own as well. Um, <laughs> so I have, like, my entire family does tune in quite a lot. My parents watch most days. So, uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, very my, interesting. Uh... Yesterday, my mother PM'd me, like, you look tired. And I was like, you said that yesterday. <laughs> I feel like she could say that every day. Yeah. <laughs> For a 20-hour stream, like, you should really be going to bed and eating your vegetables. 
<laughs> yeah, so no, I, I mean, it's it's really nice. So they like keep asking me on Skype, like, oh, how many followers did you get today? And you got any new subs, stuff like that. So that's it's very endearing. It's very nice. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've heard plenty of like streamers saying that you know parents are supportive and understand and all that, but I not really very often like you know, that they watch like almost every day. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's it's very cool. Um, are they so, watching now? Do you think they're watching now? Uh, no, it's two a.m. in Norway, but they'll probably watch the replay. Uh, I don't know actually. They don't really go on my YouTube a lot. It was my grandmother's birthday today, and I got like my entire chat to say happy birthday, Momo, and uh, sent her the picture, <laughs> and she loved it. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> well, if you do watch this, hellos is mum, dad, and grandma. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, XI asks, why don't you finally start taking days off? I'm sure your parents also be interested in this. And relax or do some other stuff on those days off. I'm mad that you go 24-7 Twitch 90% of the time. He's actually mad. He's mad, Zips. Yeah. See, Psy, XI, tries, that's XI, right? XI, yeah. Yeah, I thought it would be. Uh, he, he trolls me quite a lot, but I think it's mostly affectionate, or he tries to. Uh, and I do appreciate the concern, but I feel it's very important for me to keep momentum up. So that is one reason. Uh, I feel like taking Twitch, sorry, like I'm mostly focusing on Twitch. I'm not really doing YouTube that much. I feel momentum and like no downtime is super important. At the moment, what I call my days off would be days I do six hour streams. They are mm. my days off. <laughs> um which my that's just just for reference that's my regular stream time that's how long i know but you're stream. also doing a lot of youtube you have like secondary things as well i don't really I, it does make it easier to feel like you can take a day off when you know that you know the youtube thing is going to continue exactly where, where i Consistent don't really have revenue. that i i do rely 100 percent on twitch and the thing for me and this is another reason why i really love twitch is there's no ceiling like, say I'm working at a gas station. There is only so friendly you can be to customers, only so much you can polish your, like, equipment. That sounds weird. But anyway, like, there's only so <laughs> hard you can work at something like that and get reward. Whereas the harder I push my stream, I see an in immediate return. Like, I see, like, appreciation from people. People are like, dude, I really liked your stream today. I see you're working really hard. I get really, like, people are really nice. And it, it like I feel like I very like effort versus reward thing where I can like see it, which I feel in everything you can't. Like in a lot I, of other things. You're you're a man after my own hearts, is like I can tell why you're why you've become so successful with that kind of mindset. It's that's definitely one of the things that attracts me to twitching and YouTubing as well, is is uh you know, is that you feel like you, you everything that you do, all your growth is a result of you know specific things that you do. Like uh, yeah, it just keep, you can keep growing, and you, know? you can keep you can keep putting stuff in and getting stuff back. Yeah, and I I get a mm. lot of the comments of like, well, what are you gonna stream after path, and like, how are you gonna get bigger after path? Where and like a lot of people are saying you cannot get huge on path, and I'm like, why not? Just because somebody else hasn't like, and lots of other people have gotten quite big on path as well. But like, what I'm saying is. You don't have to follow in footsteps. You can help grow Path as well. Path can become a lot bigger than it is. I think there's a lot of potential here. Yeah, exactly. No one would have seen uh, anyone besides Crip getting 8K viewers or like 3K plus viewers in PoE. But that happened you yeah. know, several times this league. Yeah, and so, look, at, look at your viewers as well. Like It's definitely growing and I see Path having massive potential. Like I'm not, I'm not panicking or looking for any other game like fuck. I'm I'm getting two thousand viewers on path. I really need to switch soon. Like I don't I don't <laughs> want to be the next crip. I want to be the first Scizorin. Yeah, that's damn. <laughs> Floored me with that, bro. That's that's quotable, man. <laughs> Shit. Okay. <laughs> cool, man. I was gonna I was gonna follow up other questions, but that was that was fucking epic. Thanks. Well said. Well said. All right. Next uh next question then. Uh, lucky number 7N, do you guys think GGG is going in the right direction for PoE? Many people have heard say GGG making the game easier than it was before. What is your opinion about this? Uh, I have mostly agreed with, uh, I've agreed with most of their, uh, decisions for quite a while. They're, they're probably, there's less than five things I disagree with, which is amazing in a game, to be honest. 
Um, the main thing would be... Okay, so they split up the leagues before. Or no, sorry, they merged the leagues. So now hardcore and software leagues are the same. I when, when this happened, I was like, that's amazing. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything on the other league. Now, obviously, people have been talking about that sort of resulted in both leagues being overall slightly easier. But for hardcore, it would be harder. And, uh, like, for example, like, Tempest has some really sketchy shit in it and stuff like that. Whereas now, like, sort of both leagues, I feel are slightly overall easier and more skippable. I feel like a lot of things in Tempest was like, oh, it's Abyssal Tempest on a map? My balls aren't big enough to do this. I'm going to skip it. I lost my map. Whereas now it's more like, oh, you know, there's a five, five or four essence there. And that's kind of insta my character. I'll just leave it or ask someone else to do it. A lot more skippable content now. I, I'm not a fan of that. I feel okay. like there already is a league where if you want optional content, it's standard. You can put on the things in your map device. Maybe expand more on that for the people who want skippable content. I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with me. But at least for me, dynamic content and unskippable content, like beyond invasion, which every time someone pulls in their channel, what was everyone's favorite league? Beyond wins by a landslide. And beyond was not skippable. It was like... Suddenly, you are staring at a resurrection screen and there's lightning everywhere on your screen because the backstones just spawned. So yeah, it is really hard, but it wins every poll every time I see, without fail. It's an interesting one because uh, people, when people talk about that aspect of design, uh, like optional thing, they they also point to stuff like lock boxes and things as being as being you know really well designed content because of that. The fact that they're optional, but you really, really want to do them anyway. That sort of design. So there seems to be a pretty big divide in that. Like, I've seen people fall very much on either side of that fence of, you know, I really like you. So you really like the stuff that you are forced to engage with, and other people I, really like the stuff that's optional. I do like the optional stuff too, in one way, but I feel like the reward's not there. Like, there's not a risk reward thing. Like, the essences right now, they're not, a, I feel like they should be slightly more rippy because they are optional. And give better rewards if that makes sense because right yeah, now okay. they're sort of yeah like they're they're More you're repeat. gonna do every essence right now there's not like yeah. oh, i'm gonna leave that essence because it's scary but I, if i did it i would get a huge reward you're going to do every essence right now i can't see a reason not to yeah okay well, tell tell that to that goat that teleported on my face and one shot me with fireballs <laughs> yeah fair <laughs> That was pretty brutal, yeah. actually. That was fun. <laughs> that was a pretty brutal death, but entertaining. Yeah, uh, I mean that's the thing. Like, if you'd killed that goat, would you have felt like the reward risk was worth it? Mm, that goat was definitely more difficult than that. So, like, I didn't need that. Yeah, exactly, essence. exactly. Like, I feel I'm. It was probably I'm, like a tier four essence of anger or something. Yeah, <laughs> risk reward is very very important to me. So yeah, uh, stuff like that and. I think the, the biggest thing, like, Tempest was my dream league. Whenever I vote for a league, it's not Beyond, which I do love, but it's always Tempest because it was dynamic and it brought the community together. I felt like I met a lot of people. I met Angry Weasel uh, through Tempest and uh, mm. stuff like that because I was like, okay, well, I'm going to update. Every time I find a good Tempest, I'm going to update my friends with it. Stuff like that. And it was dynamic. That's what I want more in leagues. Like, say after a month, things become slightly rippier, new things come out. Maybe, yeah, like more dynamic mechanics. Um, the other direction that I disagreed with was the recent map changes being boosted by 5%. I feel like that was a bit of a near jerk reaction because the maps were easier to maintain, in my opinion, with the new bonus once you got it going. And I feel like I, I understood that in the white and yellow maps, it was really hard. And I actually think it should have been buffed more there. I actually feel like the 5% might not have been enough. In the early maps, I still see people struggling with white and yellows. And yeah, that can definitely be hard. But once, like me and Steel and Gucci, who were in the reds, which people will get to eventually, this is not, not really a point of, yeah, but you play a lot. It's not really about that point. It's more about your Atlas unlock, which when you do get to is a problem. Right now, Uber Dan, for example, or Pee Wee Dan, whatever you want to call him, has he's not like shared maps with anyone and he has like over a full tab of red maps just playing solo which there's a difference between maintaining 
and being able to supply 15 other people while only doing it solo. At least in my opinion. So I feel like uh, red maps should have been harder. Because that would also make things like the shaper take longer time. It makes you get... Like you, It takes you longer time to get bored of the end game if it's difficult and it feels like a big reward to get to tier 15s. What sort of... What sort of... When you say harder, do you mean just like harder to maintain as in dropping less? Yeah, I feel like reds drop too much at the moment. With, okay. the, with the plus bonus. Hmm... Okay, um, do you feel like reds then are something that you should be dropping out of on occasion? Like, because that was kind of how it was before, that you would, or that you would drop out of the couple, the top couple tiers of them? Not necessarily, mm. but just not generating as many new ones as you are now. I feel okay. like there should be some sort of borderline guarantee system, where if you roll your map with double damage mod and min max, just as a random example, you should be guaranteed at least a plus zero. You'll be able to maintain with rolling a rippy map and have a decent chance like the less rip you roll it the less guarantee but say you do one damage mod on it that gives you some sort of they say 100 percent added fire gives you a 33 percent chance you roll a plus zero as i said okay, earlier i'm a big fan of the risk reward if i roll triple damage min max i want to be guaranteed a map out of that <laughs> yeah but sometimes uh... like right now you do that. Oh, Vuln, Temp Chains, Elemental Weakness. Sweet, that's going to be like four, 460 new maps for me. Whereas Min Max Triple Damage, well, you know, I'm going to go to Standard and I won't get any maps out of it because it doesn't get pack size. <laughs> yeah, like, like the Triple Damage Min Max. Okay, so you're getting 15% pack size and a little bit of extra quantity, <laughs> like 45 quantity or something yeah. from those combination of mods. It feels very much not worth it. I totally agree with you. There needs to be... uh. Needs to be some uh, improvements to the link between reward and the mods yeah. that you roll, I think. Yeah, so it's, it's yeah. not necessarily something... I'm not trying to balance this after my level of play where I play like 18 to 20 hours a day. It's definitely been good changes where it, it needs to be open to. Like a casual player only has like two to six hours a day. I'm all for that. But it needs to be risk versus reward and it needs to be um, not so much over generation. Like, I think yeah, okay. tier 11s right now is one chaos. That's never been a case this early, or as early as it was. Okay. Yeah, it's less... So, you're more concerned about, like, people supplying other people, like you were mentioning earlier. Yeah, I'm not a fan of people saying, how should I roll my maps? And I'm a lot of the time telling them, what map tier are you on? And they're like, oh, I'm on tier 11. So I'm like, yeah, it's not really worth alking your maps or chaosing your maps. You know, if you get a bad roll, just destroy the map instead of using a chaos on it. Just buy a new map. That's not a fun way to like t tell people how to roll their maps it should be like oh you know like before it was like oh you know it's really good if you're double pack size it's worth the investment you'll most likely get a return even if it's not particularly like saying oh go do a ripping map but uh tier 11 is being like one or two chaos is too cheap in my opinion yeah okay um snow crash wants to know what's the skill that you wish was viable but isn't like it's fun mechanically but just isn't competitive Hmm. Wild Strike. I really want Wild Strike to work. It's the dream skill. What uh, What do you like about Wild Strike, and what do you think could make it work? It's so shiny with like different effects, and it's just so fun. Why doesn't it work? It just It just That's one skill that just oh, straight you, up needs more damage. You've gone off well. We were before we were so rudely interrupted. Is talking about Wild Strike. So the question is. What was the skill that you wish were viable but isn't? Like, it's mechanically fun but just isn't competitive. Your answer was Wild Strike. I'd like to counter with the fact that I don't think it's mechanically fun, but you like the appearance of it, you were saying, right? I thought that it just sprouts out random spells. Maybe have it be a, even more random, but, uh, yeah. You mean, like, more different spells? Just, mm -hmm. like, cast other random spells? Yeah. <laughs> From any spell in the game? Yeah. That'd be awesome. That would be really cool! That was what it should be! <laughs> wild Strike! Any spell in the oh, game. That's, tr that's truly wild, then. I mean, it'd be even more, like, screwed up in terms of how you scale it. Because at the moment, the thing I hate about Wild Strike is that it's impossible to scale. You can't scale AoE because you're only scaling one third of it. You can't add chains. You can't do projectile scaling because you're only doing one third of it, no matter what you do. Yeah. If it was any random spell, then... <laughs> I think Wild Strike like... might need to be fixed by Unique, which makes different things scale everything on Wild Strike. Hmm, 
<laughs> either that or like while strike needs to be reworked as a skill but it just looks so fun it is a good looking skill i'll give you that i mean the, sc the scaling like just mechanically i can't see how it can really be salvaged what sort of what do you think you could do with the unique like have something like where you get a stack AOE and it also adds chains or something. Yeah, it would have to be something similar to like, you know, I wouldn't say Shaper Gloves, but Pillar Cage Cards, some mechanic like that. Or Wild Strikes in particular. I don't know. It's, I don't know it's if hard. like I don't know if like a mandatory unique for it to make a skill That's viable. True. That's true. I'm not a fan of it's... that either when you say that. Yeah, like, like rolling flames for fireball. Yeah. But <laughs> But except it'd be worse because it's not. It might even be not a jewel. Yeah. I guess I could make a wild strike threshold fixing jewel, but I don't even know how they would fix it. But, yeah, I'm not oh. a massive fan of uh, threshold jewels. Hmm. Maybe if it was just really weak in damage, but could scale up well, and then had much better AOE and projectile and yeah. chains as now, so you oh didn't have to scale. Oh my god! Up. It just crashed again. So, Ziz, since we're having some technical issues, I'd like to uh, ask kind of one final question here. Mm -hmm. We'll cut the AMA slightly short. Uh, this is a bit of a milestone AMA for you, right? This is your 400 sub goal, right? Yeah, I'm currently on 525 or so. It's pretty, incredi it's pretty incredible, man. Um, so I'd like to know, like, kind of, do you have any shout-outs of, like, you know, who's helped you get to this point or kind of like a bit of a, a bit of a reflection question there like uh, looking looking back how did you know who, who would you like to shout out that sort of thing no one no um definitely <laughs> no the one. First, i did it all myself <laughs> the first answer that comes to mind is uh quicksilver i think i would have had a lot of harder time to start it's uh he was my guild leader in uh darkfall and he's always been like this you never shut up you should stream like you're, you're friendly to people you don't shut up you're pretty shitty games but no it's uh it definitely uh definitely deserves a lot of credit for my stream and he's like basically my manager at this point he like watches my stream a lot gives me feedback any like email i send to anyone like professionally or approach someone he looks it over make sure it's not crazy um yeah it definitely helps me an incredible amount so uh that's insane um I have a lot of mods as well. Uh, I'm kind of mods scared. Are incredible. Yeah, I'm kind of like, scared to name them, them great. in case I forget one. But uh, yeah, no, my mods help a lot. Especially, I know they're all pretty great. Uh, I had a lot of help like early on as well. For example, there was um, one guy inferior. When I had like 10, 30 viewers, I didn't really have any Twitch alerts and stuff. Cause I, I was pretty lucky early on with getting uh, on the ladder. Uh, so I got a lot of viewers without like having a lot of followers and I didn't have any Twitch alerts or anything or a clear screen. So he helped me set up a lot of that, which helped a lot early on. Yeah. I was just Lord Smith helped a lot in particular early on. Gave me a lot of tips for streaming. Uh, you helped me. You were always like really, uh, yeah. Okay. So, as I was about to say, like, uh, Ziggy helped me a lot early on when, uh, I approached him and uh, like first time I mentioned about the AMA, he was like, "Yeah, no problem, dude. Like, I love the come on, just tell me a time and a place, stuff like that." Got a lot of tips and advice whenever I needed it. Uh, especially like grouping up with Rise as well was really like helpful early on. An angry weasel who introduced me to Rise, I think quite a few people found me through that. Uh, and being on you and Zeno's podcast was uh, definitely helped early on. So like publicity like that and uh, like a lot of the other like there's site like, basically everyone streaming by the way was really friendly to me the entire time like it, i don't even have to name anyone because this is everyone in the path of exile community has been really helpful um i'm trying to think what else it's uh yeah it's been one hell of a ride where to from here man where to from here <sighs> I, I want to, like, a lot of people are asking if I want to do anything else than Twitch. I don't really. I want to help grow Twitch and make Twitch better. I want to grow my AMAs. Maybe start up some sort of other, not necessarily Wee related podcast, but like, I, I want to do more podcast-related stuff. I want to more, work more with other streamers. I'd love to work more with you as well. Um, 
yeah, I, I, I like cooperative stuff. I like community-oriented stuff. So definitely want to focus more on that. Definitely. Podcasting is good fun, man. Yeah. I'm keen. <laughs> Yeah. Let me know. Just let me know what you're thinking. <laughs> All right, yeah. No, we, we can talk about that. And I guess as a final, final question, what's going to be your next hardcore rip? Oh, definitely. I already know. It's going to be... Uh, I'm, I've remade my Vals Parker, which they, I usually intend them for dry late. I'm going to take them into maps, which I, I've now sussed down pretty well what I need to survive in maps. And I went... Actually, you PK'd me with your close read. Thanks for that. <laughs> Um, and then I'm going to take it too far and I'm going to be in tier 15 or 16 maps with my Valspark or something and people are going to be like, what are you doing? Exactly the same <laughs> as before. I never learned. So greed. Greed will be the rip again. Yep. Kills. Okay. All right. <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you for having me as a guest host, man. Yeah, it was fun dude, to uh, I, I want to give tapes. a massive uh, shout out to uh, Ziggy. Thank you so much for doing this, dude. This is really cool. You didn't even hesitate. My pleasure, bro. My pleasure. So thank you so much for that. And, uh, oh, actually, I, I, I just thought of an extra thing, like, Steel, um, Steel, um, Steel Guardian, Steel Mage, like, sparked off the entire AMA idea. But, uh, it was, oh, like, nice. it, was, it wasn't something he came up with, but he hit level 100, and I was like, well, would you want to, like, answer some questions on my stream regarding level 100 and stuff? And, like, he didn't know me at all. He was just instantly, yes. Oh, super nice guy. That definitely helped a lot. And and Havoc no, as well awesome. helped a lot in the star. And same thing, he was also, was, as soon as I asked, yes, time and a place. So, uh, yeah. And uh, again, thank you so much for doing this AMA. This was for the 400 subscribers I will. And uh, I hope everyone enjoyed watching this. And if you guys like Ziggy's content, under here is his address. You should, guys should go follow him. Follow him on YouTube. Which is uh, ZD Live. He's an amazing, amazing streamer, YouTuber. Uh, definitely, yeah. Won't get out the door anywhere. Definitely consider supporting him. One of my favorite streamers. Uh, if you like me and you're watching this on YouTube, my Twitch is uh, PC Child. Unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoy the AMA. And let's, uh, I think we should get everyone in chat to like, seems good, man, with ZD.